Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Restoring Hope with Crosswinds Counseling. I'm your host, Curtis Smith. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And as always, a huge thanks to our community partners, Tesco, Prime 47 Downtown, and Shepherd Community Center. Without the support of these wonderful organizations, we would not be able to be with you every Thursday night at 930 right here on WHMB TV 40. Well, as always, we have a great show for you tonight. And tonight we have a very special guest. Mark Terrell is the president of Lasting Change, the parent company of Crosswinds Counseling, and the man who actually founded Crosswinds more than 10 years ago. Mark joins us tonight. Mark, thank you for being with us. You're welcome. It has been more than a decade since you started Crosswinds Counseling. Yes. Uh, why did you start Crosswinds? What, what did it look like at that time? The need in mental health, mm -hmm. why did you form this organization? There are really two reasons. Um, but probably the most important reason was that on the Lifeline side, I kept getting phone calls from moms and dads that would say, help. And I would have to say, we can't help. You have to get in more trouble and then I can help you. And after you know 20 years of that, I kind of thought maybe we should do something about working with kids and families before they got in trouble. Mm. And that was really the motivation for creating Crosswinds is was how can we be preventative? How can we get to them ahead of time? because really the court system process is a horrible system. And we lived in that. So let's talk about that for context purposes. You yeah. mentioned Lifeline and the mm -hmm. court system. Lifeline was a company that you were CEO of for almost 20 years prior to starting Crosswinds. Correct. And Lifeline works with people who are getting counseling because it's court appointed, it's mandated by the state. Um, they have to become customers or Correct. clients. They don't really have much of a choice in it. So you're saying that motivation to, to reach a population before they hit rock bottom was huge. Mm -hmm. What have you seen in these 10 years of Crosswind's existence? What does it look like? How has it grown? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a difficult process to get, begin. And yeah. I would tell you that it didn't go as smoothly as simply as I thought. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an eight on the Enneagram, which basically says I, all my ideas are good ones, or at least I think they are. And, <laughs> right. that's, not, and that's not necessarily true. Um, but the premise that God, and I really believe that God breathed this idea was that how do we help kids and families before? Um, and it has been exciting to see what's happened. You know, we started out with a small little counseling center, and now we have one, two here in Indianapolis. We're, we're growing into Dayton, um, which just brings me joy. Um, and beyond that, there have been other things that have happened that I never planned on. You know, the idea of what we do with corporate counseling. You know, I think we're close to almost 70 businesses now, um, which is exciting because businesses are realizing their people are at risk. Um, they're in trouble. You know, they don't leave it at home. They bring it to work. Um, the 20 plus uh, schools, we never intended to be in either of those. So God has morphed it geographically. He's morphed it in just so many ways. I believe there'll be a day that Crosswinds, I've said this, I've always said this. I believe the day that Crosswinds will be bigger than everything we do on Lifeline. Hmm. And people, Lifeline is the largest provider of services in Indiana. And people go, there's no way. No, I do there, believe there's a way. Um, and we have the ability to share our faith in every one of those circumstances. We are not limited like we are in some of the area, other areas. So um, I'm excited about the growth, um, the potential. And God is just showing his face in so many ways. I never, I, never, I never planned. I wish I had, but I can't take credit for it. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. It's such a fascinating thing to have an idea, to have a plan, and then God comes along and blesses it in bigger ways than you could have imagined, mm -hmm. but in different ways. Yeah. This idea of working with businesses, working with schools, getting into Dayton, you probably didn't think that would be the no. first place out of Indiana 10 mm -hmm. years ago. No. When God takes things in a different way, yet he's gifted you to be the founder and the, and the creator of something here, mm -hmm. what, is, what is that experience like? What is that like as you kind of, you trust God, you lean mm -hmm. on him, and he directs you maybe yeah. in a slightly different way than you're thinking. Yeah, what I find is interesting is um, sometimes there are bad things that have happened. You know, circumstances, roadblocks, and you, I sometimes complain about that. And I, I call it professional whining. <laughs> um, it's, just, it's whining. It just, it just sounds better. But what I realize is that everything God does is for a reason. And that's what he's done in Crosswinds. Every, we've learned lessons. We've made mistakes. And all of those are to get us to where he wants us to go. Mm. Never thought we'd do businesses. And we're in a conversation with a company, the Lassus Brothers, because we love our people. We love their families. How do we help them? And we created, up the, created this idea of, you know, co corporate wellness, never thinking it would it morph to what it is. Um, same thing with schools. You know, God has this incredible way of building relationships 
that seem so obscure, but they all are for a reason and a path he wants us to take us. So I'm always amazed. And my mom said, my mom, where do these ideas come? And I was real honest, God, that's, that's where they're from. Hmm. At the end of the day, that's where they're from. Let's talk about the, the state of the world. Yeah. Um, 10 years ago, the world needed mental health counseling. Uh, prior to the pandemic, the world needed counselors and therapists because mm -hmm. mental health was not great. Then through the last couple of years, we've seen the numbers uh, in terms of need go through the roof. Mm -hmm. When you look across the landscape now and think about what Crosswinds can do and what it can speak into this world, how does that strike you? The state of the world, the need, and what Crosswinds is able to provide. Mm -hmm. I think um, there's something I always talk, what's uniquely different and what's uniquely better about what we're doing. And I think that's what I'm really most excited about is it, it's about family. Mm. You know, there are a lot of counseling centers that do work, great work. And it's about the individual. And we work with individuals as well. But I think what makes us really, really unique is that we're not just about the individual, we're about the family. Um, and the family has more to do with, you know, economics, health, education, behavior. it changes everything. And even that individual, I believe his results will be better or her when the family's involved. And then you throw this thing called faith. And when we talk about faith, we're not talking about shoving our faith down someone's throat. We're not talking about, hey, you have to pray with me and confess your sins before you come work for us. We'll work with anybody and everybody. What I love is our job is to love you. Our job is not to judge you. Our job is if and when it ever comes up, we have an opportunity to share our faith, great, run. But I'm excited about that. That's what is exciting. When 400% increase in mental health services are right now across the country, 400%. And I believe we've only begun to see the trauma of what happened during COVID be just beginning. Um, and we, we need help. Um, so I spent a lot of time doing a lot of things that look into the future of where, who are we helping? How do we help? So that's what I'm excited about. Speaking of things that you do, you work uh, with our state legislators uh, often. We're going to talk about that and some other things when we continue the conversation with Mark Terrell. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Restoring Hope. I'm Curtis Smith. We're continuing our conversation with Mark Terrell, the president of Lasting Change and the man who founded Crosswinds Counseling. Mark, we mentioned right before the break mm -hmm. that you work with legislators a lot. Mm -hmm. um, what does that look like when, when you dive into the world of mental health and trying to express how important it is and how much we need in terms of support from the government and our leaders there? Mm -hmm. What do those conversations look like? What are you working on with our state legislators right yeah. now? Well, first of all, we have, um, I have about 90 relationships out of the 150 lawmakers. And God has seen fit for me to have some of those relationships. And it's been very, very exciting to hear what they're doing. They are overwhelmed. Do you know a legislator might read anywhere between 12 and 1,600 bills in three months? Wow. And what we found is what I'm doing is spending a lot of time with them. If they have a question or a concern about anything with children and families, I want them to have a place that they can go. And I know this will surprise you, Curtis. I wasn't a great student in, in high school or college. <laughs> I am I was stunned. Never, I know you're stunned. Yeah. There's a thing called cliff notes. <laughs> um, and I knew it would come back to help me. But my job is I have legislators and lawmakers who will send me questions. And my promise to them, within 24 hours, I'll give them an answer and give them no less than a page of information. They need information. They want information. The other thing is most nonprofits, we love to talk and talk and talk and talk some more. And I basically said, I'm going to do it very, very quickly, but I'm not only going to talk, I'm not only going to complain, I'm going to give you solutions. And they are very, very open. They realize our state is statistically one of the worst states in the country when it comes to children and families. And they are not happy about that. Yeah, the metrics in Indiana are not good. No. But one thing you have found, I, I want you to share this with the audience as a way to encourage them. Mm -hmm. The people in leadership in our state truly do care. They're mm -hmm. not okay with those numbers and they're, they're working to make it better. Yeah, uh, and no question. And, and I, I will tell you, they've been very generous. They've given money, they've created legislation. I would say some of it has been misguided or, or maybe kind of out of ignorance, not that they're ignorant, but they do care. Um, and what we need to do is give them ideas and strategies and, and, and solutions. And they are, they are o open to it amazingly, I'm surprised. Um, but you have to give it to them in a way that they can understand and a way that they're willing to accept. And it's been amazing what's happened all the way across the board on leadership. 
given that, I assume you're hopeful as you look forward yeah. to the 23 session and to what might be able to, to get done in terms of legislation? Yeah, yeah. I think this session um, is probably the most pivotal moment we've ever had mm. as a state. From we do great, we do great economically, we have done horrible here. And I believe that the legislator and lawmakers are ready to make a fundamental change. The idea is you keep doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. We all know that's insanity. Well, they've done it um, or they've allowed it to happen or it's just come happen, but they're ready to make changes. And I am fueling the fire. Um, and it's not that I don't like the leaders in the government like DCS and others. I do, I think they're wonderful people, but it's time to make a change. Someone told me once, bring your business here, but keep your families where they're safe. Mm. Imagine that, that is not what I, I'm a Hoosier. I'm a lifelong Hoosier. We are creative, we're innovative, we're hard workers. That's unacceptable to me. And it's unacceptable to our lawmakers too. What's interesting about that is given the financial soundness of Indiana mm -hmm. and the position that we're in relative to so many states who are not in that kind of financial right. position, you would think that we could leverage that and use that strength to help in some of these other mm -hmm. areas. Are you optimistic that can actually happen? Absolutely. I keep telling lawmakers, it's not a money issue. It's an allocation issue. Mm. It's a leadership issue. Um, and they're like, I mean, you're not asking for more money? No. When's the last time a provider came and said, asked you for no money? And they're like, never. Right. And I think that's given us freedom and a board who's allowed me to do this because there's some risk. You know, I've always been told, don't bite the hand that feeds you. We bite the hand that feeds us all the time. <laughs> um, but the, the issue is this is not a lifeline or a crosswinds or a lasting change issue. This is a state issue. This is private, this is providers. And I, I literally, I think we have a chance to do something historic. And I don't say that lightly. Mm. I think we can really change the direction. 10 years from now, we'll look back, our state is different because of what they do this year. Let me ask you a question that is serious. I, I might try to frame it up in a mm -hmm. funny way here. Um, you're not a young guy. right? And uh, you have more of your career in the rear view mirror <laughs> than you do looking out through the windshield. Yeah. Um, but you have said some pretty profound things mm -hmm. about legacy, about building something, maybe seeing it to completion, maybe mm -hmm. not, knowing that you're just part mm -hmm. of the machine that God has put in place, mm -hmm. not the whole thing. As you think about the future of Crosswinds, the future of some of this legislation stuff, the fact that you're not gonna be working 20 years from now, mm -hmm. um, what do you think of in terms of your legacy and what the future of this organization looks like? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, my goal when I was a CEO for 29 years was to leave it in a position that could do far greater things I could ever do. And that is still my dream and my wish. Mm. Um, and again, will it make changes and, and ups and downs? No question. But for myself, my goal is anything that I'm doing today isn't about promoting Mark. Never has been, never will be. My goal is how do we promote, make the changes, and there will be somebody that will come alongside me. And, and I've looked at some people that I think are the right people to build relationships with the state people, with, with funders, with you know, business people. It's about relationships. So my goal is not about Mark. My goal is at the end of the day, when I'm long gone, you know, somebody might say, hey, you remember that Mark guy, whatever. That's okay, but if it never comes up, I don't care. Hmm. It's a good perspective, mm. one we probably all should have. Mm. Mark, thanks for spending a few minutes with us tonight. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Mark Terrell, the founder of Crosswinds Counseling. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Restoring Hope with Crosswinds Counseling. In our Counseling Corner segment tonight, Brendan Loniger talks about a subject that has remained largely taboo, even as we have become so much more open about mental health issues. That topic, suicide. My name is Brendan Loniger, and I am a counselor with Crosswinds Counseling. September is National Suicide Awareness and Prevention Month. So today I wanted to cover some of the basics surrounding suicide and hopefully leave you with some information and give you some options and some ways to help people that might be struggling in your life with thoughts about suicide. There are some 
big stigmas and some big misconceptions surrounding suicide. One of the biggest misconceptions around suicide is that if you ask the question, if you ask someone, hey, are you feeling suicidal? The fear is that you, ca you could put thoughts about suicide in their brain or that they haven't considered that and they may start to consider that suicide could be something that they could start to think about. This is not a thing that you need to be worried about. Directly asking the question is one of the best things that you can do if you have concerns that someone might be experiencing thoughts about suicide. Other factors to consider. Two of the things that I look for most as a counselor would be if there is a disruption or a break in someone's key relationships and if they are feeling like they are a burden to their family or to society. Those are factors that are often present when thoughts about suicide are being experienced. So now, what can we do to help someone who is having thoughts about suicide? The first step is always to directly engage with them and ask the question. And as I said before, this is often a fear. I'm going to encourage you to have some courage and just ask the question. And once you have asked the question, if someone does open up to you, the next best step that you can do is to just listen to them. As I said before, oftentimes people who are struggling with thoughts about suicide can feel very isolated from others. Listening to someone else can really be a great way to build some trust. And oftentimes this can be a little difficult because there's such a big urgency around suicide because it's very important to make sure that we are helping people who have those thoughts. And taking the time to listen and really being present is one of the best ways that you can help them. And it gives you a lot of opportunity to help direct them along the path of getting help. So what are some resources that are available for those who are struggling? So if it is not an immediate thing, but it's something that we know we need help for, you can always call Crosswinds or another counseling practice and get an appointment set up. That's something that here at Crosswinds, we're very passionate about helping people with those things. And you, know, you can call admissions, we can get you set up and we'll start working through that. As well, if the need is more immediate or we're noticing that we're in crisis, we need to do something right now. You can always call your emergency services, your local services. You can always call 911 and you can always go to your local emergency room. As well, you can always call 988, which is the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. They are very well equipped and will always be ready to help. They are open 24-7, 365 days a year. Welcome back. Each week here on Restoring Hope, we bring you our Beacon of Hope segment. Tonight, Crosswinds Chaplain Will Gross talks about love and marriage and shares his perspective from a biblical viewpoint. Hi, I'm Will Gross, a chaplain for Crosswinds. Today, I want to talk a little bit about love. I want to talk a little bit about marriage, right? We hear about that. How many times have we sat through a sermon or a wedding where the preacher talks on and on about how spouses should love each other? Seems like we've heard that a lot. But love is important. Love is a choice. We see that in our culture today because husbands and wives get to choose each other. We don't live in a time where marriages are arranged and you just get assigned a spouse. So it's really special that my wife and I got to choose each other and we continue to choose each other. In today's society, marriage seems to be optional and staying in marriage seems, is also optional. But we have made a choice to stay married and we make that choice every single day because the option is there to walk away. We don't take that. We're faithful. We stay the course. Marriage is sort of a figure 
for God's love for us. This is how John describes love, God's love specifically, in 1 John chapter 3. He says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down, down our lives for one another. Dying for someone is the most amazing piece of love. Laying down your life, making a sacrifice for somebody else. I can't think of a person outside of Jesus who has died for me, but what an amazing illustration of love for someone to say, you know what, my life doesn't matter. That other person is more important. And that's what Jesus has done for us. So <laughs> that's the message of hope. God has chosen you. Jesus has given his life for you. Should you choose to accept it? And that is the message of hope. Thanks, Will. Good stuff. Tonight we've met a counselor and we heard from the man who created Crosswinds Counseling. If you're interested in pursuing a career at Crosswinds, please visit crosswindscounseling.org careers. We have opportunities in Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, and now Dayton, Ohio. Please check out crosswindscounseling.org careers to see all of the job openings. Well, as we wrap up tonight, thanks to all of you for joining us. It's great to have you with us every Thursday night. Also, a big thanks to our sponsors, Shepherd Community Center, Prime 47 downtown and Tesco, and of course our friends here at WHMB TV 40. We'll see you next Thursday night at 9.30. Stay safe and be blessed.